Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about an important topic, and that is how to transition your skincare routine for winter. Winter is a season where the humidity drops, the air becomes drier, and as a result, moisture gets sucked right out of your skin, leaving it vulnerable to dryness, irritation, peeling, and symptoms of sensitivity. Now, having the right skincare routine can really make or break you this winter season. If you have a background skin condition like acne, eczema, or rosacea, those conditions can get a lot worse in the winter time with the drier air. So stick around, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys tips and some fantastic products for a winter skincare routine. Today's video is in partnership with one of my favorite skincare brands, Aveeno. I recommend them in pretty much every video. Their products are fantastic. They are aimed at dry skin and people with sensitive skin, so they are a logical choice of products moving into the winter season. As far as your skincare routine, one of the first things you need to take a hard and fast look at is your cleanser and how you are washing your face. If you have been using a foaming cleanser over the past several months and maybe enjoying it, it has a nicer degreasing aspect to it, that's probably not gonna serve you quite as much in the winter time. Instead, I would suggest shying away from foaming cleansers. They tend to be more stripping and leave the skin more vulnerable to dryness. Instead, you want a cream-based, non-foaming cleanser or an oil-based cleanser or a cleansing balm. The other thing you want to take a careful look at in terms of your cleansing is the frequency. If you've been washing your face twice a day, consider backing down to just once a day. The more often you are washing your face, the more vulnerable you're going to leave it to dryness and irritation. And during the winter months, that's the last thing that you want. Pay attention to the temperature of the water. Hot water is just going to dissolve that lipid barrier even further. So temperature, non-foaming, gentle cleanser, and decrease in the frequency. Earlier this year, I reviewed Avino's new Calm and Restore line for sensitive skin. This is a skincare line for the face that Avino developed. And their um, nourishing oat cleanser would be a great choice for a winter skincare routine. This very gentle, non-foaming cleanser is kind of a milky, creamy consistency to gently lift away the dirt and impurities without stripping the skin barrier. It leaves your skin looking healthy and hydrated. It's super gentle, you guys. It has oat kernel flour in it. I've got a video explaining the benefits of oats. A note about washing your face, you don't want your skin to feel squeaky clean. That is a sign of a stripped moisture barrier. This product leaves the skin feeling moisturized while simultaneously removing any dirt or impurities off the surface of the skin. Um, so it's a good one to consider in your winter skincare routine for sure. Next up, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic and that is exfoliating. And marketing overemphasizes this need for exfoliating all the time. You gotta be careful though. Too much of a good thing can lead to, well, in the case of exfoliating, increased trans epidemic dermal water loss. You want to really take a critical look at your exfoliating habits uh, and really dial back on those during the winter time. However, exfoliating in, in moderation actually can be beneficial during the winter time because exfoliating can help to lift up and slough off dry, built up dead skin cells off the surface of the skin that otherwise are kind of impairing skin barrier function, just being mounded up there. If you have that dry skin condition, keratosis pilaris, I have a video on it, but you know firsthand that a lot of times that can get much worse in the winter time as that humidity drops. It says rough bumps that can happen on the arms, the face, the thighs, I mean, really anywhere. Um, and that, those, that dry, bumpy skin can actually benefit from a little gentle exfoliation. But you wanna be really, really conservative with the frequency and the type. A, for example, an alpha hydroxy acid based uh, moisturizing product can actually help in softening that dry built up stuff. Or you might just use a washcloth to gently in a circular fashion, uh, do a little mechanical exfoliation there. You don't need to get some horse hair brush you know, and do the dry brushing thing, that actually can be too intense and lead to worsening trans epidermal water loss. And you only need to be doing this one time a week, maybe twice a week, depending on how your skin tolerates it. But anything more than that, it's just gonna set you up for worsening dryness and irritation. I'm talking about the body and the face. 
If you're somebody who has acne, there's a good chance that the treatments that you're using are exfoliating. So there's no need to add more uh, to, to the mix. It's not gonna benefit you in any way. It's only going to lead to worsening trans epidermal water loss, more dryness, more possibility for irritation, inflammation that ultimately can flare your acne, which is not what you wanna do. So be conservative and less is more when it comes to exfoliating. I already talked about washing your face, but let's talk about the shower. The shower is like a safe haven, right? In winter, it's freezing cold out and you just wanna get in there and stay in there forever. Ugh, but that's the worst thing that you could be doing to your skin. Those long, hot showers end up stripping away more of your moisture barrier. So keep your showers short and unfortunately, <laughs> Try and use cool to lukewarm water. I know that doesn't sound pleasant, but your skin will thank you if you keep the temperature in check, not too hot. Also, just as with the face, you wanna make sure that you're using a gentle body wash, one that is free of sulfates that would otherwise strip away at your moisture barrier. Now, I think people believe that they need to be using a body wash head to toe and generating this soapy lather uh, in order to, to you know, sanitize the skin or whatever. Truthfully, that is not necessary. You only really need to use soap and or body wash to visibly soiled areas. So for example, if you uh, you know, work outside, you, know, you come in and you've got a lot of dirt in places, and, you know, then it's logical to use a body wash or and or in the skin folds, areas where you have skin on skin contact, because those areas, actually the pH of the skin is a little bit different and is more prone to uh, colonization by different types of bacteria and definitely benefits from, from using body wash in those areas. Um, but you don't wanna be using a harsh soap or a harsh bar soap. Instead, you wanna select something that is gentle. Now, um, I've talked about this in my body wash recommendations video, but it, it would definitely be a go-to recommendation for a winter body wash. It is Aveeno's newer um, restorative skin therapy sulfate-free body wash. I love this product. There are no harsh sulfates that <clears throat> would otherwise strip away at the moisture barrier. It's also got panthenol in it, a wonderful humectant, and it's got, of course, as with all Aveeno products, the power of oats. Oats actually are packed with lipids and humectants that can help add moisture back into the skin. So this is a really great one to select, especially in the upcoming winter months. I mean, I think it's good all year round, but you know, in particular, consider it this winter. Be really conservative with the volume of body wash that you use. You really only need a very small amount, a few you know, teaspoons really to generate a lather to target those areas that are either visibly soiled or you know, in skin folds. So you can actually make your cleanser last a very, very, very long time uh, if you use it conservatively, and that actually will end up helping your skin overall. For example, there's really no need to be soaping up your lower legs, your arms, your back. That can really dry out your skin, cause your back to itch a lot. It's hard to reach back there. Yeah, um, so be conservative with the amount and the location that you use body washes. Let's talk about moisturizing. Moisturizing is so important all year round, but in the winter, we really need a good moisturizer. And you might consider switching over to a thicker moisturizer. A lot of people enjoy using lightweight lotions throughout the summer months. They feel better on the skin. However, a cream that's thicker can do a little bit better job sealing in, again, that trans epidermal water loss. So in winter, at least for the body, you might elect to go from a lotion to a cream. Good moisturizers will have three key components. They'll have humectants, which bind onto water. They'll have emollients, which soften dry skin cell edges, and they'll have occlusive ingredients in them that seal in trans epidermal water loss. The best time to be applying your moisturizer is after you step out of the shower, You've just cleansed your skin, you know, and the skin is still wet, still a little bit damp at least. Go ahead and put the moisturizer on at that point so that those occlusive ingredients will really trap in that moisture into the skin and help with reducing that transepidermal water loss. As opposed to getting out and towel drying, towel drying and patting dry your face and then putting the moisturizer on dry skin. It just kinda, you know, it will help still, but it doesn't work as well as if you put it onto the skin while it's damp. 
That one small change in your skincare routine of just putting the moisturizer onto the skin while it's damp can really make a huge difference. So for the body, a great cream to consider moving forward into the winter months is again, part of the restorative skin therapy line. It's their Avino's new oat uh, repairing cream. This product has the highest concentration of prebiotic oat. Uh, of all of the products in the restorative skin therapy line. And why that's so good is that oats, um, they act as moisturizers hitting all three key aspects. Oats have uh, oils to them that help soften dry skin cells. They act as emollients. Oats also have humectants, beta-glucans that add hydration. And oats also have uh, a little bit of an occlusive property to help reduce trans epidermal water loss. This product also has petrolatum, a mainstay in putting the brakes on trans epidermal water loss. And it's also got aloe, which is soothing, and it's got panthenol in it. Again, panthenol is a wonderful ingredient in moisturizers. It's a humectant. So that's for the body, but what about the face? So many of you guys, I've turned you on to this. It's Avino's Oat Gel Moisturizer. Why I like this product so much is that it's a phenomenal moisturizer for the face, but it's not super heavy feeling. And for a lot of people with sensitive skin, they put on a really heavy moisturizer on the face. And because of kind of the vascular nature of our face, we have a lot more blood vessels there that actually can just kind of make you feel, your face feel hot. It can precipitate flushing and just feel uncomfortable and itchy. So you need something that's really going to address those moisturizing needs, humectant, emollient, uh, occlusive, but not feel like you have a lead apron on your face. And this achieves exactly that, capitalizing on the benefits of oat. It absorbs really quickly to the into the skin. And just as with the body, when you when you put moisturizer onto your face, it's a good idea to put it on after you've cleansed and rinsed the skin to damp skin because those occlusives can really trap in that that hydration into the skin and you'll really see tremendous benefit from doing that. The other reason why moisturizing, especially your face, is so important for those of you guys out there with background skin conditions is that making sure that you have a reduction in trans epidermal water loss and a healthy skin barrier is really key in reducing flares of inflammatory skin conditions that would otherwise be precipitated by loss of water from the skin. Let's talk about another strategy though for your skincare routine and that is layering moisturizing ingredients. Y'all know I like to keep a very minimal skincare routine, fewer products the better, but sometimes, as you guys have seen in my skincare routines over the years, I really enjoy a moisturizing serum. I find that it just adds a little bit of extra hydration, and in the case of the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines, that space filling aspect of increasing hydration really just kind of smooths a lot of that out and can definitely improve the luminosity of the skin overall. And I find in winter, I really like doing that quite a bit. And it's kind of a nice way to change up on a daily basis. Some days you may have drier skin than others. Ingredients that you're gonna look for in these lightweight serums are humectants uh, that can really hold on to that water in the skin. Things like hyaluronic acid, uh, beta-glucans, uh, peptides, uh, marine extracts, algae. These are all wonderful ingredients to look out for in, in your humectant moisturizing serums. As part of Avino's Calm and Restore line this year, they came out with the Triple Oat Serum. So this would be a good one to consider if you're just looking for a little bit of extra hydration. It's very soothing. You can see how lightweight the Calm and Restore Serum is. It's like a burst of hydration in your face and it really just adds a little bit of something extra. Next up, I wanna talk about something that can really plague you during the winter months, if, especially if you end up coping with a bout of really dry skin and that is itch. It's called winter itch for a reason. It's worse in the winter time. Itch is a miserable sensation. It is actually on par in my opinion. I mean, they're almost, you know, peas in a pod, itch and pain. Uh, I don't want patients to have either of those feelings ever. Itch is misery and as itch intensifies, uh, it can make your life a nightmare and it interferes in your sleep quality. And guess what? Sleep quality ends up 
directly impacting the health of your moisture barrier. And then when your moisture barrier is not as healthy from poor sleep due to itching, guess what? You lose more water out of the skin and then you get even itchier. Itch, poor sleep, stress, worsening barrier function, they all feed off of each other and it can just make you miserable. So what do you do when you feel itchy? I mean, probably one of the most frustrating things to tell somebody who is itchy is don't scratch, but that's actually the best advice because scratching, while it feels good, uh, what it does is it incites more of those itch uh, chemicals and mediators causing more itch and your skin kind of reacts to that kind of scratch behavior by sort of thickening and trying to get tough to it. And with time, that chronic rubbing from scratching and worsening of those itch inflammatory mediators, it can lead to this persistent thickened uh, bump or bumpy skin. It's a type of chronic eczema. And a chronic eczema like that, that thickened skin, it's called lichenification. So what do you do instead of scratching? An alternative is actually to apply moisturizer at the time that you have the sensation of itch because it can really help lessen that transepidermal water loss and actually just the action of rubbing in a gentle circular fashion, not scratch, but rub, it can distract some of those itch signals in the skin and really help quite a bit. Um, as part of the restorative skin therapy line for body, Aveeno launched this itch relief balm with Promoxin in it. That is a good one. The Promoxin can really soothe those itch nerves and it's a nice um, balm consistency. So it's even thicker actually than, than a cream. The last aspect of your skincare routine is in my opinion, one of the most important, and that is of course sunscreen. But here's the good news. You don't have to change anything about sunscreen in the winter time because you still need to be wearing it just like any other time of the year. And you need to wear it every day and you need to make sure that you reapply it. If you're gonna be outdoors for a prolonged period of time, you wanna try and reapply it at least every two hours because it does rub off. And of course, as always, don't just rely on sunscreen. You wanna be wearing sun protective clothing, which is pretty easy to do in the winter time because we're covering up. And even you know having, having um, scarves and things like that can help act as an additional shield to UV. But it is still very important to be protecting your skin from the sun during the winter months because even though the intensity of UV is much lower, it's the cumulative exposure over your lifetime to UV that actually ends up not only contributing to photo aging, but also but also your skin cancer risk. Yes, you know, intense bouts of UV exposure like a sunburn are really, really bad, but don't underestimate the harm from just cumulative lifetime UV exposure. So the habit that will help you the most is consistent sun protection all year round, including the winter time. And the other thing you have to bear in mind if you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow is that UV can be scattered and reflected and almost intensified off of the snow and that you can actually be getting even more, it can actually end up being even more potent. So those are the key aspects to factor in when you're building your skincare routine going into winter and for the winter months that will really help in mitigating the dryness, the irritation, and the symptoms of sensitivity. And the Aveeno Common Restore line for the face and the restorative line for the body are fantastic products to consider building into your skincare routine for the winter. You guys have heard me rave on and on about Aveeno's Common Restore line for the face in other videos, but one thing I wanna point out about the restorative skin therapy line for the body that you may not be aware of is that the combination of all three products from the line, the uh, sulfate-free body wash, the itch relief balm, and the cream, the oat repairing cream, these three products were tested on sensitive, distressed, mild to moderately dry skin of adults undergoing oncology treatments. So those individuals, they have distressed skin and dry skin as a result of their treatments. And the fact that these products worked well and were well tolerated really says a lot. Uh, you know it's going to be good and a great choice moving into the winter months especially, but year round.
So those are my tips and suggestions for how to build your winter skincare routine. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And Avino, thank you for sponsoring today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.